Chapter 23 Clash on Eridani 5 The battle on Eridani 5 commenced with a display of military precision and prowess, a testament to the training and adaptability of the Drexarian conscripts. In the expansive open area just outside the largest settlement of Eridani 5's local inhabitants, the modern conscripts, numbering over 10,000, formed up in a contemporary battle formation. They positioned themselves strategically, maintaining lines of sight and cover, their rifles and machine guns at the ready. The formation was a blend of tactical spacing and defensive stances, a formation designed for flexibility and responsiveness. These modern warriors, though diverse in backgrounds, moved with a singular purpose, their eyes scanning the horizon and the skies above. Parallel to them, the ancient conscripts, equally numerous, assembled in a formation that was a striking blend of Roman and Spartan battle tactics. The Spartans formed tight phalanxes, their shields interlocked, creating an impenetrable wall of defense, while the Romans adopted the testudo formation, providing a formidable shield cover. Those armed with bows and spears positioned themselves strategically, ready to unleash volleys upon the enemy. Despite being from a different era, their discipline and combat experience shone through, their formation a daunting sight to behold. Behind each group floated their respective Drixarian generals, perched on levitating platforms. These generals, with their piercing eyes and imposing presence, scanned the skies, awaiting the arrival of the mysterious alien race. The silence of anticipation hanging heavy in the air. Among the modern conscripts, Nakia's gaze darted across the landscape, her mind preoccupied with a different concern. As they formed up for battle, she couldn't help but search for any sign of Korra and her group, who had first faced the onslaught on Eridani V. Her eyes scanned the area, hoping to catch a glimpse of familiar faces, but there was no trace of them. The uncertainty of their fate weighed on her, a silent worry amidst the looming battle. Rook, noticing Nakia's distracted state, moved closer to her. Any sign of Korra's team? He asked quietly, his voice barely audible over the murmur of thousands of soldiers preparing for combat. Nakia shook her head, her expression that of concern. Nothing yet. I can't see them anywhere. I just hope they're all right. We'll find them, Rook reassured her, placing a hand on her shoulder. Right now, we need to focus on the battle ahead. We'll look for them as soon as we get the chance. Nakia nodded, taking a deep breath to center herself. She knew Rook was right. The immediate threat required their full attention, but she couldn't shake the feeling of unease about Korra and her companions. They had been the first to encounter this mysterious alien threat, and their fate was a lingering question mark in Nakia's mind. Suddenly, the tranquility of the moment was shattered, ripping the fabric of the tense stillness that had enveloped the battlefield. The sky above Eridani. Five twisted and contorted as portals, shimmering and swirling with an otherworldly light, tore open the heavens. Through these gateways emerged long, dart-like ships, their designs sleek and menacingly elegant. They glided through the atmosphere with an eerie, almost haunting grace, descending ominously towards the planet's surface. A collective gasp rippled through the ranks of the modern conscripts. Every soldier's gaze was transfixed on the alien crafts, their presence a stark realization of the unknown they were about to confront. Nakia's heart raced, fueled by adrenaline pumping through her veins as she raised her weapon, her eyes narrowing. Beside her, Rook's jaw clenched, his focus absolute, the weight of responsibility as a leader evident in his stance. The modern conscripts, trained for combat but not for an encounter so alien, reacted with instinctual precision. Their formation, a testament to their rigorous training and programming, shifted fluidly like a living organism adapting to a new threat. Soldiers moved to strategic positions, creating lines of defense and offensive vantage points. The sound of weapons being primed and ammunition supply packs checked filled the air, a symphony of readiness against the approaching unknown. Communication lines buzzed with a frenzy of activity. Orders and confirmations were exchanged with rapid efficiency, the voices of commanders and soldiers intermingling in a structured chaos. Eyes on the sky, barked a squad leader, 
his voice cutting through the commotion. Stay alert! Stay alive! Another echoed, her tone both commanding and reassuring. Stacy, standing with her unit, felt a surge of resolve despite the fear knotting in her stomach. She glanced around at her fellow soldiers, seeing in their eyes a reflection of her own emotions, a blend of apprehension and the unspoken bond of warriors facing the unknown together. The soldiers were poised on a razor's edge of anticipation, their fingers steady on their triggers, ready to unleash a storm of bullets at a moment's notice. In this brief lull before the impending chaos, a silent vow was shared among them. To stand together, to fight with everything they had, and to face whatever these alien ships brought with unwavering courage. As the alien crafts drew nearer, casting dark shadows over the battlefield, the modern conscripts braced themselves for the first contact. This was more than a battle. It was a confrontation with the unknown, a test of their resolve against a threat from beyond their understanding. As the modern conscripts braced for the impending encounter, the ancient warriors, led by their commanders, prepared for battle with a ferocity born of centuries past. The Spartan contingent, commanded by Commander Leonix, a figure of towering strength and resolve, tightened their ranks with precision. Their shields interlocked, forming an impenetrable phalanx, a testament to their legendary military discipline. Commander Leonix, his voice resonating with the authority of countless battles, bellowed a command, and in response, the Spartans let out a unified war cry. It was a thunderous sound that reverberated across the battlefield, a declaration of their indomitable spirit. Their faces, set in grim fortitude, reflected a readiness to face whatever emerged from the alien ships. Parallel to them, the Roman warriors, led by Commander Augustus Varro, a tactician known for his strategic acumen, prepared for the engagement. Varro, a veteran of many wars, surveyed the battlefield with a calculating eye. He issued concise orders, his voice calm yet commanding, directing his legionnaires to adopt the Testudo formation. Shields were raised overhead, creating a formidable barrier as the Romans readied their swords and spears. Their discipline and experience in large-scale battles were evident in their organized, methodical approach. Above both groups, the Drexarian generals, aloof and unflinching, observed the unfolding scenario from their levitating platforms. Their expressions were stoic, betraying no hint of concern or doubt. Their eyes remained fixed on the approaching alien ships, their minds analyzing the situation, calculating the best course of action. One of the generals, a towering figure known as General Craxus, communicated orders to the Spartan and Roman commanders through their implants. His voice, devoid of emotion, echoed in the minds of Leonix and Varro. Hold formations. Prepare for engagement. Victory shall be ours. General Leonix responded with a silent nod, his focus unwavering, while Commander Varro relayed the instructions to his legionnaires, ensuring their readiness for the impending clash. The tension on the battlefield was strong, anticipation filling the air. The ancient warriors, though from a bygone era, stood ready to face a threat beyond their time, hardened from battles in other galaxies, their courage and skill undiminished by the centuries. As the alien ships drew closer, the Spartans and Romans, alongside their modern counterparts, prepared to defend not only themselves, but also the legacy of their respective civilizations. As the alien ships, now ominously dubbed mosquitoes by the conscripts, drew closer, the air was filled with a high-pitched whining sound, reminiscent of the insects they were named after. The noise grew louder and more piercing, a sinister harbinger of the attack that was about to unfold. Without warning, the mosquitoes opened fire. Beams of alien energy, bright and lethal, rained down upon the conscripts. The modern conscripts' formation was thrown into disarray as these beams ripped through their armor suits with terrifying efficiency. Screams and shouts filled the air, the sound of battle merging with the cries of the wounded and fallen. The advanced technology of the alien weaponry was proving devastatingly effective against the Drixarian tech-made suits. In response, the 10,000 modern conscripts unleashed a barrage of gunfire. Rifles and machine guns roared to life, their sounds thunderous against the backdrop of the alien assault. This time, however, the Drixarians had upgraded their ammunition. 
The new rounds, designed to be more effective against the alien craft, glowed with an intense energy as they streaked towards the mosquitoes. The sky became a chaotic battlefield of light and sound. The conscripts fired relentlessly, their faces set in determined grimaces, every shot a desperate bid to repel the invaders. The air crackled with the intensity of the gunfire, the conscripts working in unison to target the agile and fast-moving mosquitoes. Amid the chaos, Rook, Nakia, and Stacy fired alongside their fellow soldiers, their focus absolute. The upgraded ammunition was making a difference. Two of the mosquitoes took multitude of hits, their sleek forms shuddering under the onslaught before spiraling down in flames. Cheers erupted from the ranks of the conscripts at this small victory, a momentary glimmer of hope amidst the overwhelming attack. However, the victory was short-lived. As the battle raged on, it became evident that their ammunition supplies were depleting at an alarming rate. The upgraded rounds, while effective, consumed a significant amount of the rare minerals used in their construction. A quick glance at their supply indicators revealed the grim reality. They were running low, with little of the necessary elements available in their immediate environment to replenish their stocks. Stacy turned to Rook, shouting over the din of the battle. We're burning through ammo too fast. We don't have enough to keep this up. Rook nodded grimly, firing off another round. We need to conserve our shots. Aim for the critical hits. It's our only chance, he communicated to each conscript through their internal systems. As the battle on Eridani V escalated, the ancient warriors, equipped with their seemingly traditional weapons, engaged in combat with surprising effectiveness against the alien assailants. The Spartans and Romans, true to their legendary prowess, brandished swords, spears, and shields that, while appearing classical in design, were enhanced with advanced Drixarian technology. These modifications, invisible to the naked eye, transformed their ancient armaments into formidable weapons capable of challenging the alien mosquitoes. The shields, once simple constructs of bronze or wood, were now integrated with a remarkable feature. When raised in defense, they emitted a four-foot force field, a shimmering barrier of energy that deflected incoming alien fire. This technological augmentation turned the shields into a bulwark against the otherwise devastating alien attacks, providing crucial protection for the warriors. The spears, traditionally used for thrusting and throwing, had been modified to incorporate propulsion systems. Once hurled, these spears accelerated like rockets, their tips glowing with an intense energy. Upon impact, they unleashed explosive force, rivaling the destructive power of the mosquito's weaponry. The sight of these ancient weapons taking down the sleek alien crafts was both surreal and awe-inspiring, a fusion of history and alien technology. As the battle on Eridani V raged on, the ancient warriors demonstrated not only their prowess with enhanced spears and shields, but also with their bowl and arrows, which, like the spears, had been ingeniously modified with Drixarian technology. The archers, an integral part of both the Spartan and Roman contingents, wielded their bowls with the skill and precision honed over centuries. At first glance, these bowls appeared to be traditional, crafted from wood and strung tautly. However, upon closer inspection, it was evident that they were far more than relics of the past. Integrated with alien technology, the bowls had increased tensile strength and stability, allowing the archers to shoot with greater force and accuracy than ever before. The arrows, much like the spears, were equipped with miniature propulsion systems. Once knocked and released, these arrows transformed into high-velocity projectiles, their tips igniting with a concentrated burst of energy as they soared through the air. Upon impact, the arrows delivered explosive force on a smaller scale than the spears, yet with enough power to penetrate the armor of the mosquitoes and inflict significant damage. This technological enhancement turned the archers into a formidable force against the alien crafts. Each volley of arrows was a deadly rain of precision and power, cutting through the sky and striking the mosquitoes with unerring accuracy. Perhaps the most striking modification was to the swords. To the untrained eye, they retained the appearance of typical Spartan xephoses and Roman gladii, but they were far more than mere steel blades. Each sword was now a conduit for energy, 
the edges crackling with a potent alien force. When swung, these blades could slice through the air, emitting arcs of energy capable of cutting through the armor of ground-based alien combatants. The warriors wielded these enhanced swords with skill and precision, their attacks a deadly dance of ancient technique and futuristic power once deployed. The ancient conscripts' Drixarian implants played a crucial role in this transformation. The implants not only allowed for seamless integration and control of the alien-enhanced weaponry, but also like the modern conscripts enhanced the warriors' physical abilities, making them faster, stronger, and more resilient. This symbiosis of man, machine, and ancient weaponry created a unique and formidable force on the battlefield. The battle reached a fever pitch as the alien attackers, relying solely on their air assault with the mosquitoes, began to gain an upper hand. The sky was swarmed with these dart-like crafts, their relentless barrage proving too much for the modern conscripts, who were being killed in higher numbers. Without the advantage of protective shields, they were more exposed to the deadly alien fire. On the ground, the frustration among the Spartan warriors was profound. They shouted defiantly up at the sky, swords raised in challenge, urging the unseen pilots of the mosquitoes to descend and face them in direct combat. Come down and fight like true warriors, bellowed General Leonix, his voice filled with rage and contempt for this faceless enemy that fought from a distance. Meanwhile, the ancient conscript's supply of enhanced arrows and spear projectiles was rapidly depleting. Though formidable, these weapons could only be resupplied aboard their ship, a luxury they did not have in the heat of battle. Commander Augustus Vero, witnessing the dwindling ammunition and the increasing casualties among the modern conscripts, made a tactical decision. Pair up with a modern conscript, he ordered his legionnaires. Provide them shield cover. Stand together. The ancient warriors, adept in adapting to the changing tides of battle, quickly aligned themselves with the modern soldiers. The Spartans and Romans positioned their shields to protect their newfound comrades, creating small but effective defensive units. The modern conscripts, now under the protective cover of the force field emitting shields, found a momentary respite from the relentless assault. With their swords ready, the ancient warriors prepared to defend against any ground assault that might follow. The Roman legionnaires, with their disciplined formations, and the Spartans, with their unyielding courage, stood as bulwarks alongside the modern soldiers, their rifles and machine guns peeking out from behind the shields. This new strategy brought a semblance of balance to the battlefield. The modern conscripts, taking advantage of the shield cover, were able to focus their fire more effectively on the mosquitoes. Each shot was calculated, conserving their dwindling ammunition while maximizing impact. The battlefield was a chaotic blend of ancient and modern warfare, a desperate struggle for survival against a technologically superior foe. The unity and cooperation between the ancient and modern warriors were a testament to their resilience in the face of overwhelming odds.